This is Zucradowski of WeAreChange.org here in the barrios of Caracas, Venezuela, one of the top murder capitals of the world. What am I doing here? I'm crazy. As a journalist, I try to give you stories that all the other journalists are afraid to show you. I want to show you the raw truths of exactly what's happening in this world, but I think I did too much coming here to Venezuela. I'm joined by another crazy man, the one and only Jeff Berwick of the Dollar Vigilante. And the things that we have experienced, the things that we have seen here in Venezuela are absolutely insane. Jeff, j just go off some of the things we saw here. Well, I think just coming out of the airport and being told by, we actually were met by some people that we knew uh, and them telling us that uh, this is the most dangerous area is just walking out of the airport. And then we found out after we left that just a few hours earlier, a man was killed. He, they attempted to rob or kidnap him and then he was killed. That was just our initial. Uh, of course, we had to change money inside the airport because to get a, the, the amount of hyperinflation here is actually just unbelievable. You need a backpack full of money to buy a dinner. Uh, and then once we got to, into town, uh, it was just uh, crazy story after crazy story of, uh, and we're just seeing the lineups. This is a true country in collapse. This is a hyperinflation and socialism reaching its ultimate end. This is a true economic Armageddon. Venezuela is in a state of emergency right now. Its currency has been devalued 92% since the last two years alone. And the things we have been experiencing here, I mean, I grew up in, in Brooklyn in the 90s. I saw people shot, I saw people stabbed, my friends got killed. Uh, I, I went through all that, but what I've experienced here uh, is far more than I thought I would ever see anywhere in the world. And it's like the criminality is brought on by the government as a way to control the people. Like, we were driving driving by and our fixer showed us this huge, huge building. And he was like, yeah, this is a building, a skyscraper uh, that's being run by a criminal organization. There's people squatting in there and this is where all the kidnapping happens. But you walk around town and there's government mandated signs saying gun free zones everywhere you go and no smoking signs. While there's massive, incredible crime, uh, our fixer lost two of his best friends who were murdered on two separate incidences just six months ago alone. Uh, I mean, we were out just walking around last night. Just tell us, like, what, what was like that, that experience for you? Uh, it, it's the first time I've really seen anything like this. Uh, it's truly uh, reaching the end of the socialism here, the, reaching its ultimate end that socialism always ends in. Uh, it's also reaching just the uh, end of the currency, the hyperinflation, and it's, I've heard it's uh, hundreds of percent a month right now. And we went to the, some of the restaurants and uh, the, all the prices on the menu are in uh, paper and they uh, like taped onto the menu because they have to change it uh, every week and sometimes even more than that. Uh, it's changing that fast. Uh, it's, it's really like it's interesting and you brought up the gun free zones that's the most interesting part to me is no one is allowed to have a gun and this is the murder capital of the world so we walk into the hotel at night because we're a little crazy we're told by everyone don't go out and we went out uh, there was no one anywhere it was like a ghost town uh, and when we get back the security guard is hiding behind a door because he doesn't have a gun and the other the bad people all have guns yeah security guards are not allowed to have guns here there's gun free zones everywhere and criminal Criminality and murder and kidnapping is at a level that is extremely, extremely shocking. Our fixer has a huge medical kit with him in case me and Jeff get stabbed or shot here. Uh, we have tinted out windows so no one sees who we are. We always got to lock the door. Last night we were walking with a mutual Tinder match that we had and we were walking uh, just, you know, from a car to another secure kind of castle club area behind. The, and as we're walking, she just sees a regular guy and she's like, ah, ah, and she's running and we're like, whoa, what the hell? Like, I, I'm just like mentally getting prepared to for anything to happen and it's just another guy walking down the street we're driving around and it's totally completely locked down I mean I, you're gonna see some more footage on this YouTube channel as well as Jeff's YouTube channel um, but like just ice no one out on the streets at all I saw this one crazy six foot five 350 pound dude who had his uh, hands taped and he was just clenching his knuckles just one dude and it was just like a scene out of the purge anarchy and it was literally like we're being like uh, tran you know transported around like okay let's go quickly quickly here 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 you know security guards everywhere but of course as you said we're walking in the hotel room the people working in the hotel are like in Th past three doors, 
right, through like a little doorway looking when we came in, and they barricaded the doors with the luggage carriers because like they're even afraid. Any, like yeah. that would stop anyone. So those luggage carriers that the valets have, they just put them all in front of the doors. Yeah. Like that should do it. Yeah. <laughs> we walked in, and they're like, just just sh shockingly looked at us and then like quickly went back to their business but they were behind like three other doors that they could easily lock and protect themselves in which which kind of gives me the idea that the government here kind of uses this criminality uses this violence as a way to control the people so people think we need more police we need more government and the criminals here are running around just doing whatever they want, kidnapping whoever they want, murdering whoever they want with pure impunity. Meanwhile, the government sends in their agents to every business, to every private place, to every public park, to make sure that everyone has mandated signs that say no smoking, no guns, and you can't be racist. <laughs> with 50 permits that a restaurant has to have, and they are spending their resources here in Venezuela to making sure that everything is socially acceptable, that people are not violating the gun-free zones, which are insane. I mean, talk about more about this kind of state that the people here in Venezuela, because we've seen everything here. Yeah, when you talk about the state uh, of the people, it's just, you can just really see it, how it permeates in the whole culture. No one looks each other in the eye. Uh, it's no, no one's friendly. Uh, even the waiter at a restaurant, and I don't know if that's cultural or not, but they're just not friendly at all. It's just, everyone is really in a bad mood here. Uh, you brought the movie uh, The Purge Anarchy. I hate that title because true anarchy is, is just without a government and we would have a much more peaceful and prosperous world. Uh, really what it should be called is the, the purge statism uh, at its worst, uh, turned off at the worst moment. Yeah. Uh, and that's sort of what we're seeing here. And, and in actuality, for all, all those people who like Bernie Sanders as a guy, as, as one example. This is the uh, this is what he talks about. He talks about this is this is his country. This is what this should be like the perfect uh, uh, a place to show what he wants because he wants extreme socialism. That's what they have here and has caused so much poverty. We're sitting here in the barrios right now. Uh, he wants uh, guns to be taken away. They've done that. How did that work out? And you can even just look at Chicago with their gun-free zones to see how that works out. Uh, and uh, he wants to actually take control of the money supply and, and probably print a lot more money and that'll turn into hyperinflation, which they have yeah. here. Uh, so this uh, really is, is not that much different than what he's talking about. And I'm an anarchist, so I don't want, uh, I'm not saying Donald Trump's going to be a heck of a lot better. But for those people who do like Bernie Sanders, come to Venezuela, check it out. It's uh, it's great. Yeah, so social planning at its best with lines down the block for just basic necessities, lying down the blocks for public transportation that is insufficient, you know, and then a lot of people talk about the toilet paper with the government setting up a set price so poor people could afford a um, toilet paper. N there's no toilet paper in different stores. Uh, we were, you know, obviously we didn't face that same amount of uh, suffering as the average people here do, but we're trying to experience it as best as we can by giving you a full, raw, uncensored picture of everything that we are experiencing here. And it's really, it's also fair to mention that, you know, Venezuela is a petrol state. The United States and Saudi Arabia overproducing oil are now also destroying this economy. It's also fair to say that the United States sanctions here have have not helped. It's also fair to say that with everything that has been happening with the U.S. aid also funding uh, the, the groups here has not helped in any way, shape, or form. But overall, from my experiences here, this government here is run by criminals. This is a criminal state run by a few people, uh, total mafia, and I mean, what else can we say? Uh, one other topic I wanted to bring up with Jeff is specifically he has a new video out that's getting a lot of hits on the internet, specifically dealing with the economic forecast of the United States. We could only pray that it doesn't get as bad as it is here in the United States, but what, uh, just tell us about your new video, what are your predictions, and how has this kind of experience kind of added to the wealth of information that you do provide? Well, you uh, brought up a great point that the problems here aren't solely just caused by things here in the country. A lot of them are. I'd say a good 80% are, but a lot of it is the world controllers, the financial elites, and we were at Bilderberg last year. They are planning a massive collapse of the entire global economy. I just put out a video on it. It's going really viral right now. Everyone should check it out. Uh, you'll have a link to it down below in your notes. Uh, but uh, I'm expecting a complete chaos, collapse, and crisis this year to happen this year by October 
October of this year. Yeah. And a lot of people might say I'm crazy, but you know, Luke, and we've been to Bilderberg and all these things, there are people controlling these things. They do want certain things to happen. And I say in the video that it's it's likely that they want to cause complete economic yeah. collapse, a lot like here in Venezuela. This might even be a test case. Uh, and then to uh, bring in a new, uh, bring in essentially what they have here in Venezuela all over the world, yeah. more gun laws, more rules, more regulations, military, uh, um, uh, martial law, all those sort of things, capital controls, travel controls, and then bring in a new uh, one world government, one world currency uh, by 2018 is my best guess. Jeff, thank you so much for your wealth of information. We're seeing everything happen here on the front lines with the suitcases of money that you need just to buy basic necessities. As we know, after the 2008 financial crisis, it was never fixed. It was just paid over with more lies and more bull crap. It's only a matter of time. The United States keeps printing and inflating the currency as well. It's only a matter of time for the truth to come out. And you need to be prepared and you need to be smart. We've taken a lot of precautions to make sure we are safe. Nothing has yet happened to us, but for all the sponsors who are sponsoring We Are Change and keeping this independent, free news organization for you and by you. We're going to have a special behind the scenes video showing you just all the tips and tricks on how to not get murdered and kidnapped in Venezuela, which luckily, thank God, we have not yet. Stay tuned here on the front lines reporting from Venezuela, where the United States has just deemed just a year ago a terrorist state. Here on the front lines, this is Jeff Berwick and Luke Radowski. Subscribe. We're going to have a lot more information coming here your way on youtube.com forward slash we are change. Oil is at a record low. It is actually now cheaper than the actual barrel that it comes in. Economic experts in the United States are saying that soon there may be a bailout of the U.S. oil industry as prices are going down. Tens of thousands of Americans are losing their jobs. Companies are going into bankruptcies. The global financial market is being scooped and oil companies are just surviving off investments and loans. Now, and the things that we have experienced, the things that we have seen here in Venezuela are absolutely insane. Jeff, j just go off some of the things we saw here. Well, I think just coming out of the airport and being told by, we actually were met by some people that we knew uh, and them telling us that uh, this is the most dangerous area is just walking out of the airport. And then we found out after we left that just a few hours earlier, a man was killed. He, they attempted to rob or kidnap him and then he was killed. That was This is Zuckerdowski of We Are Change the Org here in the barrios of Caracas, Venezuela, one of the top murder capitals of the world. What am I doing here? I'm crazy. As a journalist, I try to give you stories that all the other journalists are afraid to show you. I want to show you the raw truths of exactly what's happening in this world, but I think I did too much coming here to Venezuela. I'm joined by another crazy man, the one and only Jeff Berwick of the Dollar Vigilante. You see right now, its currency has been devalued 92% since the last two years alone. And the things we have been experiencing here, I mean, I grew up in, in Brooklyn in the 90s. I saw people shot, I saw people stabbed, my friends got killed. Uh, I I went through all that, but what I've experienced here uh, is far more than I thought I would ever see anywhere in the world. And it's like the criminality is brought on by the government as a way to control the people. Like, we were driving by and our fixer showed us this huge, huge building. And he was like, yeah, this is a building, a skyscraper, uh, that's being run by a criminal organization, there's people squatting in there, and this is where all the kidnapping happens. But you walk around town, and there's government mandated signs saying gun-free zones everywhere you go, and no smoking signs, while there's massive, incredible crime. It was just our initial. Uh, of course, we had to change money inside the airport because to get a, the, the amount of hyperinflation here is actually just unbelievable. You need a backpack full of money to buy a dinner. Uh, and then once we got to, into town, uh, it was just a crazy story after crazy story of, uh, and we're just seeing the lineups. This is a true country in collapse. This is a uh, hyperinflation and socialism reaching its ultimate end. This is a true economic Armageddon. Venezuela is in a state of emergency.